interest of time, we will get going. So again, we're here for the financial bursary information session. A kind reminder that we're only going to be discussing the financial bursary that applies to Sheridan's continuing and professional studies, sometimes known as continuing education, sometimes known as CAPS, sometimes known as this part-time school, sometimes known as the night school. So any one of those iterums, you are in the right place. I put in the chat box on the side where all of our programming is. is. So if one of your programs pops up on that website, you are in the right place. So a brief agenda of what you can expect tonight. We're going to do brief introduction and CAPS overview. So what continuing and professional studies is just in a very, very quick slide. We'll do a land acknowledgement. Then we'll get into the really nitty gritty of the financial bursary and application process. We'll talk about helpful tips and information needed to actually successfully complete the forms required. And then, as mentioned, we'll open it up to that question and answer period. For those who have kind of popped in in the past couple minutes, you will see on the right hand side of the screen, there is a question and answer box. You'll see some questions have already come in. That's how you can communicate with myself and my fellow panelists who is here today. If you have any questions, comments or concerns throughout the presentation, we kindly ask that you pop it into that box and we will address them all at that open period at the end. So a brief introduction to myself and my fellow panelists. So my name is Ashley McKernan. I am currently the Opportunity Recruitment and Retention Specialist with Sheridan Continuing and Professional Studies. I've been with this department for about six and a half years, five of those years in a student support role, supporting the arts, media, and culture portfolio. And within the last year, I've kind of evolved to the digital marketing, student engagement, and student experience side of things. So I'm really excited to talk to you today about financial aid bursaries and CAPS. Melissa. Thanks, Ashley. So hi, everybody. My name is Melissa Thompson, and I am Student Awards and Work Study Coordinator with Financial Aid and Awards. Um, I've been for sh with Sheridan for a little over 10 years. I've been in this role for about two and a half years, um, and I'm excited to talk to you all as well about the, the bursary and hopefully answer some questions and, and ease the application process for you all. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So a very brief kind of one slide overview of what continuing and professional studies is, who we are within the communities we, in which we serve, but also who we are underneath the Sheridan umbrella. So what we essentially do is offer upskilling, reskilling, second career, and even Canadian credential options for our students. And those are all designed for either personal or professional development. So whether you're looking to upskill, reskill, you know, land that new job, we most likely have an academic program pathway that will fit into your very distinct uh, wants and needs. We also offer accelerated learning options. So with all our wide variety of different credential types, so we have everything from certificates all the way down to individual workshops, all of those can be completed on different timeframes. So some of our courses might last up to 14 weeks. Some of our workshops might just last a couple different a couple hours. So we have that wide variety of real life flexibility to find a course that fits into your schedule and your needs. We also offer a wide variety of different services to our students. So our education and employment consultant is one of our kind of new services that we offer. So at any time during your academic journey, you can sit down with her, you can talk about your resume, you can work on your interview skills, you can do some labor market research. If you kind of want to match your career goals versus the offerings that we have, we can totally do that for you and it's a completely free service. Our Opportunity Center is also designed with student excellence and development in mind. So they are the individuals that you will hear from from your very first inquiry all the way up until graduation. And they will check in with you periodically just to make sure you're on the right track, you're connecting to the right services, or if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about being a Sheridan student. So that they're really that 360 inclusive holistic support for you in your academic journey. We also offer tutoring and a wide variety of different library services. So let's say you're in an accounting program where there's a lot of influence on math. If you need that one to two hours of free tutoring with one of our specialists, that's totally available to you. Our library is a wide variety of different databases, podcasts, apps, Anything and everything related to being a Sheridan student can be found kind of within the library as well. They can help you write, uh, they can help you, let's say, uh, source 
information for projects. It's a really great handy tool for being a Sheridan student. And lastly, what we're here to talk about today is the financial bursary. So just another service that we offer students. And lastly, the question that we get most often is what types of programming do you offer? And all of our programming is designed with career advancement in mind. So whether you need to get the skills needed to get kind of that promotion at work, if you're looking to segue into a totally different profession and you need a, a certificate to do that, all of our programming is designed with your future in mind. So we have everything from project management, data science, human resources, home inspection, practical nursing, Microsoft Office, digital photography, visual design, and much, much more. So with our over our 200 offerings per semester, there's probably most likely an academic program that fits into your needs. So understanding that we're here for the financial bursary for tonight, so I am going to hand it over to my colleague, Melissa, who's going to walk us through that process. Melissa, I'm just making you the presenter now. Perfect. Thanks so much, Ashley. Um, yep. So as Ashley mentioned, I'll take you through the process of how to apply for the bursary. But before we get into that, I'm just going to start with a brief land acknowledgement. So. We would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather has been and still is the traditional territory of several indigenous nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Wendat, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Since time immemorial, numerous indigenous nations and indigenous peoples have lived and passed through this territory. We recognize this territory is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, and the Two Row Wampum Treaty, which emphasizes the importance of joint stewardship, peace, and respectful relationships. Sheridan affirms it's our collective responsibility to honor and respect those who have gone before us, those who are here, and those who have yet to come. We're grateful for the opportunity to be working and living on this land. So this is what I'm going to go over with you this evening for the Sheridan Continuing Education Bursary. We'll discuss how to access the application, how to complete the application. I'll provide some tips and information, and then we'll have a question and answer period at the end. So to begin with, I'm going to show you how to access the online application. Uh oh, and I see this hyperlink is not working. Sorry, bear with me one moment and I will open it on a different screen and share that with you, sorry. Okay, so I think you can all see this is the homepage for the Sheridan Continuing and Professional Studies website. In order to get to the bursary application, you can start by going into student guide, you're going to scroll down and in the list of registration information options, you'll choose financial assistance. And this will bring you to the details about the continuing education bursary. So you're all here this evening in this, this information session we're doing. So we're excited to have you all here. Um, this bursary is for students enrolled in continuing education programs. Um, and it's aimed to provide support for students with low family incomes. The bursary will provide up to $200 per course to a maximum of $500 per academic term. Additionally, we do have the Sheridan Black North Initiative bursary available for continuing and professional studies students. So students who self-identify as Black are eligible for this bursary. There's a question in the continuing education bursary application that'll help us identify if you're eligible for the Sheridan Black North Initiative bursary. So overall eligibility requirements are that you must be a domestic student. So a Canadian citizen, permanent resident or protected person as defined by the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. Um, your family income does need to be below a given threshold for family size. And you cannot be receiving funding from either second career or the Ontario Bridging Participant Assistance Program. Um, that's a separate bursary that's specifically for students in the HR Connections and Supply Chain Connections courses. Additionally, you do need to be enrolled in courses that are required and working towards a Sheridan College certificate, recognition of achievement or micro credential through continuing in professional studies. And your study period needs to be at least four weeks in length. So those are kind of the overall eligibility requirements. 
The deadline to apply for bursary assistance, sorry, I'll zoom in on this a little bit. The deadline to apply for assistance is no later than 10 business days after your class starts. So if you're enrolled in multiple courses, I would look at the start date of the latest course and we would calculate 10 business days from that date. Um, students do need to register and pay for courses up front before you'll be considered for the bursary. Um, and just keep in mind when you do complete the application, at some point it will probably provide you information about a general application. This is specifically for students who are enrolled in full time post secondary uh, programs or courses, and you can just disregard anything referring to the general application. So now you've kind of read through the overview and we're ready to begin the application. So you can click on this orange link here and it'll take us directly to the application. So um, to start off, there's a description page with a bit more information. So again, the bursary is up to $200 per course to a maximum of 500 per term. There's the information about the Sheridan Black North Initiative bursary that we've reviewed. And just keep in mind only one application per term will be considered. So we are currently looking at courses starting between May to August. And um, these are courses that are considered part of the spring term. Again, the eligibility criteria listed here is the same as what was on the website. And we do have the breakdown of family income thresholds. So in order to be eligible for the continuing education bursary, your family um, income and resources need to be below these cutoffs that are listed here based on family size. So a single individual with no children, your resources need to be below $65,342 to be eligible for the bursary support. You can see as the family size increases, so does the income threshold. Again, the application deadline is 10 business days after the start of your courses. Um, and application decisions will take place after that deadline to apply because we need to make sure that the drop deadline has passed before we make any award decisions. Uh, applications will be considered in the order that they've been submitted until funding has been depleted. We've never run out of funding so far, so um, not really something to be too concerned about there. Any communications or notifications about your application, I will send that to your Sheridan student email account. Uh, so you can access this through studentmail.sheridancollege.ca. You'll use your Sheridan username and password to access that. Um, if you're not sure what your username and password are, you can connect with the CAPS Opportunity Center or with our IT department and they can help you with your access credentials. So just keep in mind if I have any questions about your application or if I need additional information, I'll connect with you through that shared and student email account. Once a decision has been made on your application, you'll also get an email to that shared and student account. If your application is approved, you will be sent a check in the mail. It takes about four to six weeks from the date that the bursary is posted on your account. And the check will be mailed to the address that you have on file with Sheridan. So it's really important to make sure that you have accurate and up-to-date contact information with Sheridan. Um, also keep in mind funding through this bursary is, is taxable. So you'll receive a T4A in February. Um, so right now we're, are in 2021. If you are approved for bursary this term, you would get a T4A in February of 2022. Um, so it's important as well to make sure your social insurance number is up to date on your student record so that we can issue that T4A document to you as well. Last but not least, academic progress. So you must successfully complete the courses that are funded or approved through this bursary um, in order to maintain your eligibility for for future bursary funding. Um, if you withdraw from a course or you're unsuccessful, you would potentially have to complete just one term at your own expense before becoming eligible again. Um, if you have any questions after this presentation or as you're completing the application, uh, you can connect with me here, capsawards at sheridancollege.ca. Again, we ask that uh, any communications be sent through your Sheridan student email account. So now we've got kind of an overview and some details about uh, what we need to be eligible for the application and we're ready to apply. You're going to click on this blue apply button on the bottom corner here. And it's going to ask you to sign in with your institution. 
So in this case, you're going to type in your shared and username and password. The same one you use to check your shared and student email. And it will bring you to the online application. So you can see right here at the top, it says complete your general application early. And there's another message about the general application. Again, you can disregard anything referring to the general application. Um, right now it's showing my account as an administrator. So bear with me. Sorry, I'm going to go back in and make sure that I get the student view for you all. You know what, sorry, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment just so that I can go in with a different view. Bear with me. Some Jeopardy music while I get this ready, sorry. It's all good, take your time. Okay, here we go. So when you click on that, uh, that blue apply button, it'll bring you to a screen that looks like this. So on the left hand side, it will say Sheridan continuing education bursary spring 2021. As you can see, there's some instructions at the top here. So um, you can work on your application and click on the save and keep editing option. We'll see that at the bottom. Um, if you want to come back at a later date to finish it, once you're done everything, you would just click on the finish and submit option. And keep in mind, anything that's required will be marked with an asterisk. And this website works best if you use Google Chrome or Internet Explorer. So we'll go through each of the questions on the application with you. First, you're going to start by entering in your name as well as your shared and student ID number. You're going to indicate your residency status in Canada. And you can see there's a drop down menu with options to choose what your current residency status is. Next, you're going to provide proof of your residency status. You can see there's options here because I've uploaded some test documents and you can see there's multiple documents that I've uploaded as tests here. So keep in mind, whichever one you choose is what I can see. So even if you've uploaded multiple documents, I can only see the one that you select from that drop down list. Um, the system doesn't allow me to pull in multiple uploaded documents. Next, you're going to indicate your marital status. So again, you can choose from the drop down list, whatever is applicable to you. You'll let us know if you have any children under the age of 18. If so, you would indicate what their ages are. Next, you're going to answer the question. Um, this is what I mentioned earlier about the Sheridan Black North Initiative bursary. This is how we would um, identify you as being eligible. So I'll just read through the question. On July 16th, 2020, President and Vice Chancellor Dr. Janet Morrison signed the Black North Initiative CEO pledge committing Sheridan alongside other leading Canadian institutions to specific actions and targets designed to dismantle systemic anti-Black racism and create opportunities for underrepresented members of its community. As an initial step, Sheridan has identified funds to support Black students with financial bursaries to help offset the costs of their Sheridan education. So based on your response to this question, you, may, you would be eligible for the Sheridan Black North Initiative Bursary. Do you self-identify as being Black, so African, 
American, Canadian, Caribbean, or multiracial? And you would choose yes or no to this question. Next, you're going to let us know which continuing education program you're currently pursuing. Uh, so keep in mind, we're not looking for the course that you're in, but which overall program you're working towards. Next, you let us know if you've previously applied for a Sheridan continuing education bursary. Uh, if you have, you can let us know which term. This doesn't have any impact on your eligibility. Uh, it's just another way for us to track and see how many students are able to access the bursary for multiple terms. Um, it, it's a new opportunity that we started just this past fall. So, so we're excited to see uh, how many students are able to be assisted through funding. This is one of the ways that we're helping uh, to track that information. Next, you let us know if you are receiving second career funding and if you've applied or receiving assistance through the Ontario Bridging Participant Assistance Program. You'll also let us know if you're receiving OSAP, so Canada Ontario Integrated Student Loan, Ontario Student Loan, or a Canada Student Loan through OSAP or financial assistance from another province, territory, or country. This doesn't impact your eligibility for funding. Um, but it's something that we would have to take into consideration as a financial resource. Um, sometimes we have students who are enrolled in post-secondary programs or the micro-credentials, um, and then they might be taking a continuing and professional studies course in addition to that. Um, so it's just another financial resource we make sure to take into consideration. The next question you're going to answer is uh, letting us know your current employment status. So you can choose from the drop down menu there again. And then you let us know your gross employment income for the 2021 calendar year in Canadian dollars if applicable. Um, obviously, things are very um, up and down in the labor market right now. We know there's a lot of changes, especially with the most recent lockdown. Uh, so if there have been any changes to your employment in 2021, you can also put that information here. Uh, so, for example, if you worked maybe from uh, January until the most recent lockdown started, you can provide those details here. Next, you're going to estimate your total government income for the 2021 calendar year, if applicable. So this would be things like the Canada Recovery Benefit, Employment Insurance, Ontario Works, ODSP if you're receiving the child tax benefit or CRCB, the Canada Recovery Caregiver Benefit, and any other source of government income you might be receiving, you can put those details here. Again, if it's not something that you've received for all of 2021, you can provide some of that context in this, in this field as well. The next thing you're going to do is provide documentation to support the financial resources you've declared above. So, you can see here there's some instructions. It's important to attach anything that applies to your situation in one file. So both your employment and government income, if you've received both, you're going to provide it attached in one file. So you can either copy and paste things into a Word document, uh, or if you know how to combine PDFs, you can do that as well. And again, you can add files. You can see there's a couple of test options I've uploaded here. Again, whichever one you select, is the one that I'll be able to view. So even if you upload um, a pay stub, say this was a pay stub, and then the next file you upload is your government support, I'll only be able to see the one that you select, which is why it's really important to put everything together in one file before you upload. Okay. Um, so the next section is going to be if you have a spouse or common law partner, again, you're going to provide the same information for them as you did for yourself. So employment status, employment income, government income, and then proof of financial resources all in one file. The last thing you're going to do is uh, decide if you want to accept our student application declaration and consent. So I'm going to read through this for you. So it says, I understand that I can withdraw this consent at any time before I accept financial assistance under this program. I understand that if I withdraw any of my required consents, it will affect my eligibility for bursary assistance through the Sheridan Continuing Education Bursary. I understand that if I'm eligible, bursary funding will be directed to me as a reimbursement of eligible education costs for in-session courses that I've already paid for. I declare that the information contained in this application and the appended documentation is complete, true, and accurate. 
I understand that failure to supply information that is complete, true, and accurate will result in the termination of my bursary application and will require any shared and continuing education bursary funding I have been previously awarded to be returned to Sheridan College. I consent to the release of my personal information to Sheridan College units involved in the delivery of the Sheridan Continuing Education Bursary and government ministries as appropriate. So there is a note if you don't consent and, and agree to this declaration, uh, we are not able to review your application. Okay. Um, so I mentioned there were some instructions. I'll scroll back up to the top. If you start the application, you can save and keep editing if you want to come back to it at a later date. Um, and once you're done and you've you've input everything that is necessary, you're going to click the finish and submit button. So because I already did a test, the only option I have here is update your application. Um, but if you're going into this for the first time, you will see those save and keep editing and the finish and submit options. So that is the application process. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and we'll go back to the presentation. Okay. So just a few tips um, and some helpful information. Again, it's really important that you check that shared and student email account regularly. Um, if you forget to submit something on the application or if I have any questions about documents or information that you've declared, I will send you a communication to that shared and student email account. So um, I'll also usually provide you with a deadline to respond. So it's really important that you check that on a regular basis. If you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. Um, I do check that CAPS awards at Sheridan College account on a daily basis. Um, so I'll respond to your email as quickly as I'm able to. And just a reminder, if you're approved for the bursary, Checks are issued about four to six weeks from the date that it's posted to your account, and we will send it to the address on file. Um, if you need to verify your address, you can reach out to the CAPS Opportunity Center, um, or you can reach out to me and I can verify the information that we have on file for you to make sure we send the, the check to the correct address. So that is the Sheridan Continuing Education Bursary application, and we can open it up now for questions that you might have. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to go over that. That was perfect. So what we're going to do is I've seen a couple of questions come in privately through the chat, a couple come in through the QA. If they're, if they're relevant to this presentation, I will read them out, and then most likely it'll be Melissa answering them and not me. So the first question that came in privately through the chat is how do I calculate the threshold you mentioned? Is it 2021 or 2020? 2021. So we're going to do a projection based on the resources that you declare on your application. Um, so you would have provided employment information if applicable, as well as government resources if applicable. Um, so I take that information and project it out for the remainder of the 2021 calendar year. And we're looking at gross employment income, not net. So that's an important distinction as well. Perfect. Next question I can answer a bit and I'll pivot to Melissa. I'm taking three courses that are part of a certificate. Would I apply to all three or just one? So it is a reminder that um, the bursary limits, I think you mentioned were up to $200 per course, up to $500 per academic term. So if whatever comes first, so if the three courses, you know, can fit into that $500 per academic term, that's fine. If you reach that limit with uh, two courses, then you reach it with two. Does that make sense, Melissa? Yes, yeah, so the other thing that I'll add is, is just one application per term. So if you're enrolled in three courses, you don't have to submit three applications. It's just one. Awesome. Thank you. Next question is, I'm an international student. Can I apply for this bursary? So unfortunately, international students are not eligible for the bursary at this time. Um, the reason for that is that the source of funding that we use for the bursary is specifically designated for domestic students. Next question is, I've already applied for the bursary. Do you have a timeline and when my application will be looked at? So I try and look at applications um, at least every other day. Um, 
If I have any questions, I'll send you an email, or if I need any additional information, I'll send you an email. Um, if your application is all good to go, I'll change the status from submitted to pending, um, and you should be able to see that if you go back in to look at your application. Um, that being said, I'll send you a decision email once we've passed those 10 business days from the start of your course. Um, so if you've submitted your application and everything is good to go, the first email you'll get from me is your approval email. Um, and again, everything goes to that shared and student email account. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, if I am on employment insurance, what proof would you need for me to submit? Great question. So uh, back in the day, pre COVID, um, the government <laughs> used to send a lot of statements in the mail and now everything is online. Um, so for employment insurance, you should have a, my service Canada account. Um, and you can take a screenshot of the applic or not of the application, sorry, of your, um, your eligibility. So what I need to see on that screenshot is your name, um, the name of the government support that you're receiving, as well as the breakdown of how much and how often you're getting funding. Likewise, if you're getting the uh, Canada Child Tax Benefit or you're receiving CERB, um, you can also go to the My Account for Individuals you can just go on Google and search EI statement, CERB statement, um, and it should take you to the government website. Um, you can just take a screenshot of what you have on your online portal. Makes sense. Perfect. Uh, how can I submit proof of the CERB benefit if it went via direct deposit? Mm -hmm. so, um, so similar to EI, you can take a screenshot of your online account. Um, that being said, I know if you haven't set everything up online, it can take a, a week or so to get it set up through the ministry. So do that as soon as possible. Um, please don't provide bank statements just because that'll give me access to a whole bunch of other confidential information that I don't need and that you probably don't want to share. Um, so again, if you go on the government website, you should be able to uh, take a screenshot of a statement or, or your funding eligibility. Perfect. Next question is a good one. So I am unemployed, so I see that I need to provide the letter of explanation for expense management. What needs to be included in that letter? Great question. So I don't need to know what your expenses are. I just need to know how you're meeting those. So if you are receiving family support or if you are accessing savings, I just need to um, have an understanding of what source of funding you're using to support your, your household needs. Very good. If I'm on paternity leave, can I still apply? Will the T4A impact my employment insurance? Okay, so there's a couple questions there. So if you're on parental leave, whether maternity or paternity leave, um, absolutely you can still apply. So you're likely receiving an EI uh, income for that parental leave. So you'll provide documentation showing that um, in terms of your T4 impact in your EI, I'm, I'm not sure how that would impact that. That would be part of your application process. Um, but that also prompts me to, to mention something else. So when we're looking at your employment income, I cannot accept a T4 as proof of income because it's going to be for the previous calendar year. So it's important that you submit an um, most recent or a pay stub from the current calendar year. Perfect. That's good to know. Um, I think you already went over it, but is there a threshold limit for the income to qualify for this bursary? Yeah, Maybe just so a it, reminder. Yeah, so it does depend on your family size. So when you're on the continuing education website, if you click on the link for the bursary, it will bring you to the description page that lists out the financial thresholds per family size. Perfect. If I am sponsoring my partner, can they be added to the family number to calculate the income eligibility? They can. Um, so that being said, any financial resources that they have, whether if they're in Canada already, or if they're still in another country, that would have to be declared. So if they're working in another country, um, I would need employment details from 
that country, if they're receiving any other kind of financial support um, outside of Canada, I would need that information as well. Um, if you're submitting documents that are in another language, unfortunately, I only speak English, so it's always helpful for mm -hmm. me if um, you can flip me an email with just a, a quick translation of anything that's important. Um, if there's anything I don't understand, I'll probably either use Google Translate or reach out to you as well. Um, and again, anything from another country, if it's in a different currency other than Canadian dollars, then I'll do the currency conversion on my end because uh, we do need to calculate everything in Canadian dollars. Good to know for sure. So this question, I'm just, I'm going to paraphrase it. If I'm attending a certificate program here, is this bursary the only bursary in which continuing in professional studies students are eligible for? Yes. So at this time, this is the only bursary that we have available. Actually, sorry, I should say we do have a separate Ontario Bridging Participant Assistance Program. Uh, that's specifically for students just in the HR connections and the supply chain connections courses. Um, those courses are offered with continuing in professional studies in conjunction with access employment. Um, and students who are receiving that bursary are not eligible for the continuing education bursary. Um, but again, it's just those two courses that are eligible for, for OBPAP and not this one. Um, otherwise, yes, this is the bursary that's available for continuing and professional study students. Perfect. So the next question is, are ESL courses included for this financial aid? And I want to preface that by saying that continuing in professional studies does not have ESL courses. So I'm thinking you might be part of the larger Sheridan community and the full time study side. If you wanted to clarify in the questions and answers box again, uh, what courses you are enrolled in, but currently continuing in professional studies does not have English as a second language courses. So I just want to confirm that you're in the right place. Um, next question, if I have a dependent, but not my child under the age of 18, do I need to indicate that? Good question. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess the question says, do you have any dependent children? So maybe I should update that. Do you have any children in your care under the age of 18? So if, if you have custody or guardianship, um, or if you are providing full care for a child who's under the age of 18, then they would be part of that. So you just have to say yes or no and what their age is. Perfect. Good to know. Um, next question, I'm going to paraphrase a bit. So I'm looking for a job. I am on EI. I've only enrolled in one subject so far that's part of a certificate. Am I still eligible for the bursary? I would yeah, say so, yes. Yeah, yeah, Go ahead. yeah, yeah. as long as you're enrolled in a course that's working towards um, either a certificate or a yeah, certificate of recognition. Oh my goodness, I'm going to mess this right. up. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> Certificate, Recognition of Achievement, Micro-Credentials. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So as long as you're in a course that's part of one of those um, programs, then you would be eligible to apply for the bursary. Perfect. This is a good pathway into where you can find if your courses or program is part of that. So on our website, let's say you're looking up something like human resources on that program page, it will distinctly say shared in certificate, shared in micro credential, shared in recognition of achievement. So if you see any of the courses on that page, they would be relevant towards the bursary. Um, next question is, I'm, I am a full-time employee. Do the courses, oh, sorry, that's the wrong question. Um, so I've already registered for my courses for the spring term and I've already paid the fees. Is it still possible to apply for the bursary? It's a good question. I don't think we, we mentioned when to apply or mm -hmm. I might have missed yeah. that. Yeah, so you do have to register for the courses ahead of time. So it's great that you've done that. Um, so you can apply for the bursary up to 10 business days after your courses start. So um, it's good to apply sooner than later. That gives me just a bit of extra time to review your application. And uh, if there's anything outstanding, then we can get that in in time. But uh, yeah, you do have to, to register and pay ahead of time. So you've got step one done. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. You're, you're halfway there. Um, at this moment, I think we hit all the questions. 
so I'll give it a couple minutes for okay. individuals to pop in any last minute questions that we might have missed. Uh, there's a couple questions I skipped over because they were related to the OSAP, which is a full time financial aid, which we aren't discussing today. But this is probably a good segue to talk about where you can connect to the right people. So our Opportunity Center, which we've mentioned a couple times in this presentation, I am going to pop it in the chat. You can reach them anytime. We are open six days a week and normally off hours as well. So we're here at night. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about, you know, CAPS programming, course availability, this financial aid bursary, we highly recommend you reach out to them and discuss next steps. On the next slide as well, we're going to give you a, an email address to discuss the CAPS financial bursary exclusively. So if you have any questions that are very specifically related to your application, you have to know the correct individual to reach out to. And let's say you happen to stumble upon this presentation, but you're looking more towards OSAP or full-time financial aid inquiries. The email address of fin, F-I-N dot award, I think, at Sheridan, did I say it fin wrong? Dot aid. It's fin dot aid, thank fin you. Dot aid, yeah. <laughs> I, I merged the two email addresses together. Fin dot aid at SheridanCollege.ca can walk you through those OSAP and full-time course uh, inquiries or financial aid information. Yeah, so I'll just, I'll flip it just over to the next slide so you can see there's the CAPS Awards email there. Um, and that's how you get in touch with me if you have questions specifically about your application. Perfect. Uh, just two more questions came in, one of which is a good one. So is the Opportunity Centre part of Employment Ontario? So actually, no, the Opportunity Centre is actually part of Continuing and Professional Studies. So it's a division within uh, our department that works exclusively with our students, helping that student experience. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, they're kind of with you from that very first inquiry all the way up to graduation. They can help you connect with the right Sheridan services. They can help you connect with this bursary. They can help you talk about program pathways, availability, uh, et cetera. So they're a really handy kind of uh, center to discuss anything and everything related to being a Sheridan student. Uh, next question. In one of my previous questions, I mentioned sponsoring a, a parent, not partner, and they are in Canada. Do I add the sponsorship parents to the number of family? Okay, so uh, good question. Um, so what I would recommend is send me an email. Um, so this is something that came up recently from another student, and it's something that we are kind of looking at adding potentially to future applications. But if you send me an email to that CAPS awards at SheridanCollege.ca, um, I will need some additional details and some additional information. Um, so like I said, yeah, just shoot me an email, CAPS awards, and I can go through that with you individually. Perfect. Next question I think was answered, but just in case it was missed, I'm on EI and I need to prove my income. Would you want me to log into my service account or do you have any other means to provide proof of income? Yeah, so it's going to be your Service Canada account. Um, so again, we don't want bank statements just because that has a lot of additional confidential information. Um, so yeah, logging into your, to your Service Canada account and taking a screenshot is the best way to provide those details. Um, I know I think I saw something, it might have been a private message to me saying it can take some time. It might be past the deadline to apply for you to be able to get access to that information. Send me an email and let me know um, and we can, we can do a workaround for you. Perfect, that's a great answer, thank you. Two questions left. If unemployed, what type of letter is needed and from who can you kindly clarify? Yeah, so, so if you're unemployed and you're not receiving any type of government support, um, you can just type it out in, in Word, um, just an explanation of how you're meeting your household financial needs. So whether you're relying on, um, on savings or if you are maybe living with a family member or have a um, sponsor or somebody who's supporting you, just provide the clarification in a, in a letter and upload it to the application. Can you clarify, should we be completing the general application underneath the Sheridan Con Ed bursary? 
Nope. So ignore anything that has to do with the general application. You might see different notifications and messages as you go along. Um, just completely ignore them. Disregard. Um, that's specifically an application for full time students. Perfect. And a, a, a couple questions came in when we were discussing the um, EI and service account. A lot of students mentioned that they don't have access to their service Canada account. What would you recommend? So that would be something that you would have to get set up then um, in order to provide that supporting documentation. So it, it can take a little bit of time. So again, if you think you're, you might miss the the deadline to apply, just send me an email. Um, I can make note of it and take that into consideration. But we do have to have that government um, support. We have to have documentation from the government. Um, mm -hmm. This is just in case we ever get audited, we need to have the appropriate proof of resources for students. Of course, makes sense. All right, I think that brings us to the end of our question and answer period. So I've popped a couple email addresses into the chat box for everyone to see those full time financial aid inquiries, our opportunity center, and you can see on the screen currently the one for the con ed bursary. So if you have any questions, comments or concerns, those are kind of the three avenues in which you can pursue, depending on what type of question it is. Uh, our opportunity center, as I mentioned, is always open to aid inquiries and kind of troubleshoot them. Or even if you have no idea where to start, they can at least put you on the right pathway moving forward. Um, Melissa, was there any kind of wrap up questions or statements you had? Um, no, I guess the only thing I would say is, again, if you have any questions, do reach out to me um, and I will I'll do my best to get back to you. Hopefully within the same business day, if not the next day. Um, I am out of the office on Thursday this week. I have an exam for one of my own courses. Oh, yay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll set an auto response just so you know that. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you have any questions, don't feel like you're bothering me. Send mm -hmm. me an email and, and I'm happy to help. Absolutely. Yeah, if that's the only message that you get from the presentation, we are more than happy to help you get in connection with the right services and kind of set you on the right pathway. So I will let you go for tonight. I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.